Hi guys, welcome to a video and today's video topic is about Should Taylor Swift come out of the closet? Should Taylor Swift come out of the closet? Now, as a disclaimer, this discussion is partially hypothetical and also part of a much broader conversation surrounding lesbian and queer visibility, which I find very interesting for lesbian reasons. And this conversation that I'm having in regard to her sexuality it's based on the work that she's put out into the world for public consumption and discussion. I just like to sprinkle in here that it's not in any way offensive to suggest that somebody might be a lesbian or might be queer. Only Tom Cruise thinks that and Tom Cruise is, he's a topic for another video. I mean, that video would have to be like five parts long. Now, I don't know Taylor Swift. I, I don't. I did, I had a, I had a dream about her one time and it was actually, it was actually sapphic, but uh, in real life, I don't know her and I don't know how she identifies. But what I do know is that a lot of her content has heavy, heavy sapphic undertones and some of her content, it's not even sapphic undertones. It's just literally gay. She's also changed pronouns in her songs on stage. She's changed up he with she a couple of times. And yeah, there's just a lot to unpack with that girl. There is. By the way, I only really took notice of this a couple of years ago. Up until that point, I'd kind of just been kind of bopping along to her music and not questioning anything. And then I stumbled upon a master post about the rabbit hole and everything has changed. Now, you could argue in terms of her sapphic content, she's just an ally. She just makes that kind of content because she wants to be supportive and okay I mean to a degree that kind of tracks I mean I think having a lesbian couple in one of your music videos yeah that's just being supportive it's having representation I think that's a fair argument I think writing a number of songs about other women and changing pronouns on stage it kind of veers off into to the doing too much to just be an ally territory you know let's just take Adele for example I think Adele is very much a gay ally she's great but she's not doing all that. Adele does like the movie Carol, she does, but I think that's just more of a Kate Blanchett appreciation thing rather than a sapphic thing. Actually, Adele might be sapphic. You know, watch this space for it. Should Adele come out of the closet? No, I just, I don't, yeah, I don't really get any vibes from Adele. I mean, I do get vibes from Taylor Swift, but that's just, that's not really evidence. That's just more my spider senses, which have no, because then is it wishful thinking because I had that dream about her and you know all of that. What I'm saying is the amount of sapphic content that Taylor Swift creates suggests that it's probably personal. So hypothetically speaking and going by what Taylor Swift's sapphic content suggests, let's just say she is on the queer spectrum. So why hasn't she ever said anything about this? And should she come out and say something about this? Should she come out and and own her queerness. Well, no. I mean, nobody owes anybody an explanation or an announcement about their sexuality. Even if you're a world famous singer, I don't believe all your boundaries should just be thrown out the window and everybody is entitled to know every last little personal detail about you. Second to that, perhaps she just doesn't label herself. And if you don't really go by a label, you're not going to come out and announce yourself as something that, that you're not. Because sexuality is very complex, it can be fluid, you may have had one or two experiences that you continue to write songs about time and time again, but you don't actually identify a certain way even if you've slept with a number of women. And there are a lot of straight women out there and I've known them personally and that's how it be for them. You, you know the score. However, just because she hasn't made an announcement about her hypothetical queerness, does that mean she's hiding it? In my opinion, no. She releases more sapphic content than I do and I need to catch up. She's competition. I feel like her supposed queerness is there for people who recognize it and for everybody else who's so kind of wrapped up in heteronormativity, they can just ignore the 
those aspects of her work and go about their day. I mean, it's pretty hard to ignore something like, you need to calm down if you're a raging homophobe, but okay. Now, in terms of business, because she is running a business and wants to make capital, I think it's probably an intelligent move in relation to capitalism to just let people assume what they want to assume about your sexuality. So you can continue making as much revenue out of as many types of people as possible. But like I said, I do feel like it's at the stage where it's kind of hard to ignore the queerness in some of her content. Then again, we do live in a world where people will believe absolutely everything and anything except that a woman can love another woman romantically. It's it's called lesbian erasure. So would she lose revenue if she came out as queer or lesbian? That's hard to say. As much as I like to think that society is more accepting nowadays, I do think there's still a vast majority who view any kind of gayness or queerness as immoral or, you know, they associate it with negative connotations. So there's a real possibility she would lose money and support if she came out. That being said, there's a noticeable amount of famous women who have come out as queer and as far as I can see, it hasn't really damaged their career significantly. But at the same time, the most beneficial thing in terms of finance is probably just to ignore the subject altogether. So then this leads us on to two more questions. Is she queer baiting with her content if she's not queer? And if she is queer, is she hiding her queerness to maximise profit whilst pandering to a mainly heteronormative audience? And this is where it gets complicated because her queerness is hypothetical. As much as in my own personal opinion, you know, I think she reads the occasional poem by Sappho, only she knows the truth truth and, um, and probably a few others. So it's impossible to answer either of those questions without really knowing the truth. This is why the conversation surrounding Taylor Swift and queerness is so interesting. Because on the one hand, she's never confirmed her queerness in plain English. But on the other hand, it's very much there in her work and her performances for everybody to see. So it's not really hidden either. I guess in my own personal opinion, no, I don't think she has ever queer baited because I do believe that she's a friend of Xena. I do. I think she's just subtle about it, I do. You know, all this kind of gay coding and changing up genders is very, very early 20th century lesbianism. Hmm. Hmm. So then this leads me on to the question of, is it important that queer and lesbian women are visible? Yes and also no. Like I said, nobody owes anybody anything. Sexuality is a personal thing and coming out is dependent on so, so many factors. At the same time, in regards to the Western world, the history of gay and lesbian rights is very heavily intertwined with gay and lesbian visibility. Life is a lot better for gay and lesbian populations nowadays in the West. Really because the community was forced to show up, it was forced to start speaking up and being visible and advocating for change. Because historically when gay and lesbian populations remain invisible and they don't have a voice, other people will start speaking for them and projecting their own notions onto gay and lesbian populations. And we know where this leads. We see it time and time again with minorities. It leads to dehumanization and it leads to legal oppression. You know, all the rights I have as a lesbian in the working world, in fact, in every area of my life, it is due to activism and it's due to gay and lesbian visibility. It's such a vicious cycle because society for so many years has created such a hostile environment for gay and lesbian populations to survive in. And this is why so many gay and lesbian people don't come out of the closet and they feel safer and more secure when they don't speak up. But it's a vicious cycle because as I say, when you have these gay and lesbian populations who remaining invisible and voiceless, 
you have other people defining their narratives for them. You have other people speaking on behalf of gay and lesbian populations and dehumanizing them. So the more of us who choose to be visible, the better. Because then society is kind of forced to look at people like me as human instead of this kind of preconceived notion of something negative that they had in their head. That being said, I know that coming out is a privilege. It really is a privilege and it's dependent on so many factors. And this video is in no way meant to shame any gay, lesbian or queer people who don't want to come out because of various reasons. That's also completely valid. But it is important that we have these conversations about lesbian and queer visibility and invisibility. And ultimately, it's such a broad conversation with or without Taylor Swift. But in regards to Taylor Swift being possibly queer, as I say, no, she's never made an announcement, but I don't feel like she's really hiding either. I don't know, she has a Venus in Scorpio, those guys are complex, That that's all, that, don't I know it? Don't I know it. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for me gossiping about Taylor Swift when it's none of my business some more because I have no life. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.